The next prophet was Zephaniah. Zephaniah. Between Haggai and Habakkuk. Okay, Zephaniah. Prophetic voice challenging us, challenging us to be dependent on God and to understand how to do everything with God and how to enjoy everything with God. Challenging us to be dependent on God so that we can understand how to do everything with Him and how to enjoy everything with Him. Key verse, Zephaniah 317, the Lord your God is with you. I'm the one that will do it. You cannot do it. You need to be dependent on me. You cannot do it on your own. You need to be dependent on me. I'm with you. I'm the Lord. I'm with you. I am mighty to save. You cannot be the Savior. You don't have the might. You need to be dependent on me. Yeah. Second point. I am mighty to save. I rejoice over you. No. I take great delight in you. I take great delight in you. God loves it to be there for you. Amen? I quiet you with my love. Shh. About all the past sins. It's not a cover up. It's by the blood of Christ. It's gone. No fear. Then you can come close. No fear. Then you will come close. Perfect love drives out all fear. Come close in my love. Amen. We're going to do this together. We're going to enjoy this together. I will rejoice over you. I will be the father cheering you on. I'm cheering you on. You will enjoy this with me. Amen. Amen. Dependent on Him, where you understand to do everything with Him and you will enjoy everything with Him. That's that one. Two other verses with that. Zephaniah 1 verse 12. And at that time I will search Jerusalem. Okay, those who are settling on their lees, who say in their hearts, the Lord will not do good, nor will he do evil. This is the guys the prophet is speaking to. The Lord's going to do nothing. Nothing good, nothing evil. So why do I need him? Dependency on God. You think, yes, God is he's in control. Yes, you are knowing all the principles. But there's no desperateness that you really need him. You know it as a theology. But in reality, how do you stand with that? The Lord will do nothing good, nothing evil. In chapter 2, Zephaniah 2, verse 15. This is the joyous and exultant city that dwelt carelessly, that said in her heart, I am and there is none beside me. I am and there is none beside me. The first one says, God is doing nothing. The second scripture, I am doing everything. When you don't understand what God is doing, and you're not realizing what He is doing, you are believing you are doing it. Hello? If I think that I'm doing it, then I believe God is doing nothing. Are you with me? Okay. But in the end, the Lord your God is with you. He's mighty to save. That is what the answer is. Let's get out of that. Maybe you are discouraged and you feel nothing is happening. Be careful. In your words, in your heart, it could actually mean God is doing nothing. I don't have a breakthrough. He's just dragging everything. What about just standing in faith and know that God will do it? Finish. Not your strategy. God will do what He wants to do. Okay? So I'm going to enjoy that with Him. Finish. Okay. Ten Commandments, twelve. Out of this, how am I going to get to the place to be dependent on Him. How will I be dependent on Him? Number one, if you haven't got it, if you didn't get it last time, just write it quickly. Chapter 1, verse 7. Be silent before the Lord. Finish. You want to be dependent? Blame it, Bikisto. First point <laughs> out of 12. Just be quiet for a moment. No, no, not in your head. You are busy. I mean, I can sometimes I can stand here and you can see how you are busy with other things. And sometimes even irritated. No, no only one of you, you know. <clears throat> but if you want to be dependent on him, then you take opportunities with his word. Take opportunities to be silent. Yes, you have your strategies and God will just naturally guide you. Not according to the word of God. 
Yes, it will grow naturally more and more. But even Jesus, you won't believe it. He just didn't, he didn't set that pattern. He will take extra time, he will take extra time to be quiet, to be quiet, to be quiet before the Lord. He will wait on him, on his Father. Not one of us is above him. You look at your life, you have a really time when you get quiet before him, you become more like Jesus. But don't fool yourself, don't be deceived. Don't think if they have no time to be quiet, just to shoot that you have God's pattern, that you are dependent on Him. Not at all. You're realizing that you need Him, that you are not dependent. Be silent. Number two. Verse 14. The great day of the Lord is there. Hark the voice of the day of the Lord. That means hear. The other translation says hear. <laughs> Hark. The angels. There is a song like that. Okay. This is old English, man. Hark. Okay. Hear. It actually means hear. Okay. You cannot hear if you first not decide to... Oh, shut up. Yes. Okay. To tell all that voice is still. So get all the voices in your head under control. Say, in the name of Jesus, you will be still. Amen. Be still. Be still. Be still. Be still. Amen. You know? And then hear. Have an expectancy to hear from him. Number three. Number three. <laughs> Collect your thoughts. <clears throat> Collect your thoughts. Your thoughts can be all over the place. Afrikaans is talking about pull yourself together. Maria. Okay. So it's about <laughs> pull everything together. Because you are all over the place. Your emotion is great here. But there's a little bit hurt. And this part is given to the Lord. This one is having faith. That area of your life is... Just pull everything at least together. So that you can have at least uh, one person. No split personality in 20, in 20 ways. Pull everything together. And number four. Unbend yourself in submission... And see if there is no sense of shame and no consciousness of sin, sin left in you. O shameless nation. Ish. Collect everything and put it now before God. Good. Where am I? I will choose. I will hear from you. What are you saying? I will bring my everything. Bring it all together and put it there. Even though I think I'm in control. Even though I think my life is okay. I will bring it all to you. If I want to be dependent on you, I will bring everything to you. Then I will put it and I will be open. I will unbend myself. I will be open for any foolishness that I could have before you. Number four. Number five. Seek the Lord. That is chapter two, verse three. Seek the Lord, inquire of him, Inquire of him and require him as the foremost necessity in your life. Seek the Lord and his righteousness. Just further down. Many times he will say, I'm seeking the Lord. Are you sure? First, if you choose, if you are quiet, if you understand how to keep quiet and how to become quiet and how to become silent and then how to hear and how to collect your life and all your thoughts together and then how to put it before God and turn from the evil ways. Then only you come to the point of saying, now I'm seeking God. Now you are in the position to seek Him. Hallelujah. Number six. Number six. Who have the notes here? Zephaniah 3 verse 8. So therefore earnestly wait for me. Expect me. Verwacht my, say the Afrikaans. Wait for me. When you seek, you expect. Amen? When you seek, you expect. I will be dependent on him, therefore I will do nothing unless I see him. I'm expecting him, and if I don't see him, I will do nothing. If I don't have a confirmation of seeing God in this strategy, it's a no-go. That's dependency on God. Practical dependency on Him. Amen? Yes. 
Hallelujah. Number six. Number seven. Verse nine. They will call upon the name of the Lord. They will call upon the name of the Lord. Calling upon the name of the Lord. I'm standing. ACDP. NC. HNP. High in beer. What? What? <laughs> Ask the old guys. <laughs> okay. You are standing for what? You're standing for a name. And you, some guys will live and die for that name. Hello? You are standing for one name. The name of Christ. Ons alleven ons zal sterven. Ons voor die naam van Jesus. That is what we say. Amen. I will honor his name. It says, I will call upon the name. I will call upon nothing else, upon his name alone. Number eight, the command, number eight, serve him with one unanimous consent and with one united shoulder, bearing the yoke of the Lord. One united shoulder is as onze yek Sandra. Come in us. Oh, we are in unity. Yes, we walk together. Yes, we walk together. It's great. I hear your heart. You hear my heart. And, oh, we need to pray together. You know? Yes, yes, yes. And we walk together. And I'm going, my, oh, my brother, I need you. We really need one another, you know? And I'm going with my way. Okay, oh, we want to walk together. Oh, we make a commitment. We really pray together. We love together. We know one another's hearts. We do this together. How did he say? I'm supposed to use my glasses. Um, with one anonymous consent and with one united shoulder. For the yoke. Hello. Now where he walk, where I walk, is a little bit more intense. Are you with me? Donkey, Ines. Are you with me? And you need to push yourself to walk in that way the whole time. That is unity. That is now suddenly talking about being dependent on one another. <clears throat> you call yourself dependent on God, then you will be dependent on one another. You're not dependent on anyone. You're not dependent on God. You can honor Him and say you honor Him, but you're not dependent on Him. It doesn't mean we must be asking everybody for any, everything. But somewhere I will sit with a brother. Yes, I will be helping him. He will be helping me. I will ask the Holy Spirit. Who must I help? And in what way do I need help? We have a difficulty to ask the Lord, who must I help? Because it could be dangerous. You know? God could say something I would not like to do. But asking God, God, how, in what area do I need help? I have my own areas that I believe I need help in. But what do you say, Lord, where do I need help in? In your attitude. Okay, Lord, I change it. No, go to someone and let them walk a road with you about your attitude. You need help in this area. This area you think you are strong, but not. You need help in that area where you are strong. But Lord, I'm strong in that area. But you don't know what's laying ahead tomorrow. Yeah. Hello? And it's foolishness to get this guy and this guy about this area because you have success in this area. But you don't know tomorrow is boom. Wise version of foolish. You need to hear from God how, in what way do I need help, Lord? Okay, Zephaniah, you're getting the point. We are at number. Number nine. And in that day you, the congregation, shall not be put to shame. Don't allow shame in your life. Because the blood of Christ has dealt with that. He has dealt with that. Amen? Make sure there's no shame. You will not take shame. Sometimes we want to prove ourselves we need to be a success because there's a shame about the area in our lives. We are putting certain things up front because there's a shame. That's manipulating my life. I need to be set free if I'm going to be dependent on Him. If you're dependent on Him, believe that the blood of Christ has set you free and cleansed you. That is being dependent. Number 10. 
Verse 14. Sing, shout, rejoice, be in high spirits. That means inside. And glory with all your heart. Amen. Everybody say sing. 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 Okay. There's one. Shout. Shout. Okay. Rejoice. Lad, I don't frack. Verse 16. In the day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not. Let your hands not sink down. That's number 12. First of all, fear not. That's 11, yeah. Fear not. You are dependent on him, why are you fearing? If you are fearing, you are not dependent. But work these principles in your life, otherwise the fear will be there. We've walked now through 10 principles, eh? And but come to that point, and you better come to that point if you are dependent on him and you want to see that you will go and work with him and enjoy everything that you do with him. Then fear must go. Finish. It's standing between you and God. <coughs> God is for me, who can be against me? I'm dependent on Him. That's it. Fear not. I'm dealing with this fears. I'm dealing with that fears. I'm dealing with that fears. Oh, we can be manipulated by our feelings, by our fears, by our situations. God just command you. Fear not. Finish. Conversation over. It's a choice. You're going to jump off there. You're going to bungee jump. Oh. Please counsel me first. Please do this. No, no, I'm dealing with my fears. That guy will say, you want to go or not? Just stand back. Other people want to go. You know, the world knows that principle. You stand there and what do you do? You must just make a choice and then you jump. Hello? But in the church, it's getting very... What's the word? Complex, you know? All the things. <clears throat> Hallelujah. That's uh, number 12 is let your hands sink down. Not, let not your hands sink down or be slow and listless. Be slow. Amen. Are you slow in your work? That's not no dependency on God. You will have a testimony that there's some rumor in you. Oh, yes, I repent, and you hopefully also. We mustn't get to that point. Sometimes we have a type of a burnout where we're just totally exhausted. Why? Somewhere we were not dependent on Him. And the yoke wasn't easy, the burden wasn't light. Because we were not dependent on Him. Because He would have said, Stop, my child, rest. Or do this, turn to the left. Don't take that opportunity for your life. That is Zephaniah. Are you with me? Yes. Okay. It will never be so long like tonight. No, I repent from that statement. The key word is Zephaniah, the key word is Haggai, the key word is priority. You have a cook. Stability. Jonah? Oh. Obedience it doesn't rhyme with the rest. So we say dependency and uh, obediency. Yes, that's a word. Okay.